Hello and welcome to another pen video for me, Penultimate Dave. So I have here a, another pen for review. Now, strictly this isn't an unboxing video because I don't have the box with it. Um, so this really is more of a review video. But this was a pen I um, I was talking to Vince. Uh, and if you don't know Vince in, in the pen circuit, in the UK pen circuit, show circuit, uh, Vince actually runs the Northumbrian Pen Company. And he also runs the Turner's Workshop that creates or provides a whole load of blanks for custom pen makers. And he also has a whole load of pen storage and, and pen parts and you name it, he has it. Uh, so I was talking to Vince at the show and I'd picked up, this was the London Pen Show in October 21. And I uh, picked up a bunch of uh, Galen leather and some other things from his table and uh, gave him the money for it and he said to me that he would uh, lend me a pen for review and towards the end of the pen show he shouted across the room and said don't forget your pen Dave <laughs> so it, this is the pen uh, this is a pen lux pen and this is the masterpiece in grande so this is an oversized pen and I have to say this is very similar to a size of a Mont Blanc 149 and let me show you a Mont Blanc 149 so that you can see so this is a really interesting size pen it's not quite as tapered to the Mont Blanc 149 it's a little bit more girthier as well in certain areas of the pen but it is a Mont Blanc 149 size pen and yes, I do have a Mont Blanc 149 actually in my collection. I probably should review it at some time, shouldn't I? But anyway, this is the Penlux Masterpiece. This comes in a number of different colours. This is a, a semi-opaque um, demonstrator that you see here. Now, in terms of the cap finial, uh, it's a nice sort of dome effect there. Highly polished. The cap finial tapers in there. You have the metal band for the clip. And then the cap tapers out to what is a cap band. And the cap band there, uh, you'll see it says Penlux. And that's just all it says. The There is a bit of a step down from the cap to the body. And then the body starts to taper in slightly to this band here. And then tapers in a lot more. So what is a piston filling knob? Yes, that is a brass piston that you see inside here. And that adds quite a bit of weight to the pen as well. Now, the clip is a standard sort of Italian style roller clip. Uh, you can lift that clip up. It is quite springy. Um, if I unscrew the cap here, you'll see it has a Pen Lux P logo on the nib. Now, this is a Yovo nib, and I want to show you something here. Let me get another Yovo nib. So, these are two Yovo nibs. Now, obviously, the one on the left is an Esther book, but it's still a Yovo, and these are exactly the same size. I thought initially this might have been a number eight size nib, but it's definitely not. It's a number six size nib on the Penlux. Now, I would actually like to, to see a number eight size nib because if I compare it to the Mont Blanc 149, that nib does look a little bit smaller there. So that's a, a nine size nib versus a six size nib. Now, this is a piston filling pen. Now, the section itself uh, tapers down slightly here. It does flute out a little bit towards the end here or the base of the section to stop your fingers actually falling down. Now this is a piston pen, so you can't unscrew it. It's not a cartridge converter. These pens are actually pretty reasonably priced compared to, um, if you compared it to say like an Estabrook or even a custom made pen, uh, this has a piston mechanism in it. Uh, whereas most of the other pens have a cartridge converter. And typically they're around about the same price. I think these are about 170 pound, about $200. So this isn't a bad price. 
It does have a steel nib, and this one is a medium nib that you see there from Penlux. And it has an ABS plastic feed. But you can see that piston mechanism in there. So here is the amount of ink that will ever fill into that body of the pen. The rest of this space is for that piston mechanism. But basically, you just if I just twist it slightly. I haven't got a huge amount of ink left in there. You'll see that there and that piston rolling up and down. So for me, this is a really good size of pen. Uh, can I post a cap? I can. And that honestly is a really nice size. And honestly, with the weight of the, the brass piston inside here, I would say that that is actually quite nice being posted. It is a little long though, but I have to say that that is nice. Now, the other thing also is that this, this cap actually drops onto the body here. So if you twist that when you're undoing it, it's not going to twist the piston. So again, I like that design in this Penlux pen. This is a really, really good design. Uh, I like the girth on this pen. It's a very girthy pen. Um, and I do like that it's a demonstrator so I can see the amount of ink there inside that pen. Uh, now, Penlux do a, a lot of other models as well. Um, this one definitely has, it is an oversized and definitely has a uh, piston filling mechanism inside it. So it's going to hold about probably 1 to 1 1.2 millilitres of ink. Probably about almost double what a standard cartridge converter will hold, which is normally around about 0 0.6, 0 0.7 millilitres of ink. So I think with that, let's do a size check. We'll do a weight check. We'll do a pen comparison. And then we'll do a writing sample. So the size of the pen, the full length, we are looking at about 148 millimeters in length. So this is an oversized pen. The length of the cap, we're looking at 69 millimeters in length. And then if we look at the length of the body to the tip of the nib or tip of the tines, we are looking at about 135 millimeters in length. So this is an oversized pen for sure. Uh, this is a very, very nice size pen. I have to say that this is really, really good. Uh, so from, from my perspective, I do like this pen a lot. And yes, I can post the cap if I want to. So that does post well. Um, I'm typically not into a green pen uh, or a green demonstrator pen. However, I do have uh, a few. I have a Visconti Homo Sapiens Jade. Um, so I have been going into this. This is a little bit more of a greenish sort of olive color. Uh, and I'm not typically that keen on the olive colours. However, I have to say that although this pen should be going back to Vince at uh, Northumbrian Pen Company, I I am really loving how this pen writes. And I love the size and I like the weight. And I, I'm having to really think, do I maybe give Vince some money and, and just say I'm not sending the pen back? Uh, it, it's a, it is a nice pen for me. Um, I like everything about this pen, honestly. So that's going to be a tough decision. I'm going to have to think this one over. I don't really want to add a lot more pens to my collection, but it's a nice pen. So maybe I will. So let's do a uh, weight check. So the full weight of the pen, and it's probably got about a third of the ink in there. It's just over 33 and a half grams in weight. The weight of the cap, we're looking at just over 10 and a half grams. And then the weight of the body, we're looking at just under 23 grams. So it's a nice weight pen for sure. And I have to say, it just feels substantial and also really nice in my hand and coupled with the writing experience that you'll also see it's a very nice pen so i think let's do a writing sample so this is the pen lux and it is the um masterpiece And it's the Grande. 
and it is in rainforest green. And it is a medium uh, still uh, nib, and I, that's a Yovo nib there. Now, in terms of the ink, this is Akamon. Bazudan would drawn. Uh, and then in terms of line variation, I'd say you're getting it medium, maybe almost a Western fine out of this nib. And I can push it a little bit more and get, I'd say, more of a Western medium. So it's probably a fine to a medium. And then, as you can see here, there are no hard starts or skips to that nib. Now, in terms of ink wetness, let's take a look. It's a fairly wet nib. It's not a fire hose nib, um, but it is a wet nib. So you can certainly get uh, some uh, wetness out of that nib. Now, in terms of uh, the pen, what do I like? What do I not like about the pen? Well, I like that it's a demonstrator pen. I like that it's a piston filling pen. I like that it's an oversized pen. And it's a Mont Blanc 149 size. It feels really good in my hand. It's got a, uh, a brass piston mechanism, so it's weighted. Uh, this really actually feels nice in my hand. What do I dislike about this pen? I don't honestly dislike anything. Uh, the nib writes exquisitely well. And that's one reason why I'm seriously thinking about either buying this one or maybe buying another color of the uh, masterpiece uh, that that they uh, have. Um, they do have a clear demonstrator. So, so this one retails in the UK for about 160 pound. Uh, there are other versions uh, that are a little bit more expensive on these uh, that can be up to 340 pounds. Uh, but they do have a number of different colors here. So. I'm very tempted. They have a, a purple. They have a uh, like a almost a, an aqua blue color. Uh, I'm tempted at possibly getting one of those. Although I may still keep hold of this green one. I, I will see. Um, I like how this nib writes. And I have to say that this is a pen that uh, I can see myself writing with a lot. And it's a piston, so it holds a lot of ink. So that's my review of the Penlux Masterpiece Grande. Uh, if you want to pick one of these up in the UK or even internationally, go and check out Vince at the Northumbrian Pen Company. I'll put a link below here so that you can, uh, and also a link in the description so you can click through uh, and you can see these uh, uh, masterpieces. Uh, you can also buy them uh, elsewhere as well, online in the US uh, and in other countries. Uh, I got this one from Vince at the Northumbrian Pen Company. Uh, so his uh, link is uh, down below that you can see there. So that's my review of the Pen Lux Masterpiece Grande in the rainforest. Thanks for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you on the next pen video. Bye-bye.